By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at an old school magic battle fought in the finals of the X Points Monthly. And we have two exciting decks for you. We kind of have a Disco Troll Ponza mix that's being played by Felix. And he is taking on a deck with Killer Bees. I'm just excited to see Killer Bees in a finals. It's a deck piloted by James. And I don't know about you, but when I look at the Killer Bees, I have to think of that uh, epic album by the Wu-Tang Clan. Let me know if you feel the same way, because I think it's kind of a generation thing, isn't it? Anyway, um, in case you don't know, X-Points is um, a little bit, well, I wouldn't say tricky, but it's a little bit different than maybe uh, that you're used to. X points uh, stands for X stands for 10 and it means you can spend 10 points on cards that have points allocated to them. Here you can see the overview that they have at the moment. So this is how the points are allocated as we speak for this finals. Now these points systems, they do change over time. So it's never stuck. Um, you know, I, I believe the, the people that play the format can vote on it uh, through Facebook and then new decisions are being made about what points go up, what points go down. But the main idea of this point system is that you get more diversity in the decks. Okay, so these are the points. Um, now let's uh, dive into the deck decks. Oh wait, before I do that, let me say what I always say in advance. That is, if you want to skip the deck decks, go straight to the action. The best way to do that is check the description below because there you will find timestamps and the timestamp that reads MTG Games will get you straight to the action. And now we are really, really going to start with the deck deck, and I'm gonna start with the deck of Felix. And here we see the deck of Felix. Now this is really a mix of two very well-known decks, and it's always nice to see people making that step, right? Thinking, wait a minute, what if I can combine these two really good strategies to maybe make it one really winning strategy? And the two strategies that we really see in this deck is Ponza. Now that kind of refers to a land destruction strategy of red, green, and black. Now obviously red, green, and black each have a stone rain version. Let me put it like that. You know, we see four stone rains, four ice storms, and four um, sinkholes here. So 12 spells in total that can destroy a land, right? So it's pretty obvious what you wanna do if you play Ponza. You wanna make sure your opponent doesn't have any lands at all, meaning he hardly will have any mana, and that will give you a huge advantage, of course. And because he's also playing with some ramp in the form of Birds of Paradise, he will be able to maybe start destroying lands as early as a turn two. Well, actually I'm saying that it could even be as early as turn one because he's also playing with Moxon. If we look at how he's allocated his points, he's chosen to go for Soul Ring, Mox Emerald, uh, Mox Jet, and I believe, oh yeah, the Regrowth and the three Mishra's Factory. So that's quite interesting. A Mox, in general, it's pretty expensive points-wise in X-Points, so you don't see the mocks that often. And because you don't see the mocks that often, and you hardly ever see a Black Lotus, by the way, it means that land destruction strategies are simply better. Because one of the issues in old school with land destruction is, hey, you've destroyed the land, but he still has a mox or a Felwer Stone or a Mana Dork, whatever. Um, but because there are less mocks and, and no Black, hardly any Black Lotuses in X-Points, um, it's kind of you know, your land destruction gets better. Now, on top of that, he's combining it with the Troll Disco strategy, right? Troll Disco is a deck where you use your Neverneral's Disc to wipe the board, and because your creature is a set troll, it has regeneration, you regenerate it, it survives the wipe, and then you can start attacking your opponent. Of course, uh, Neverneral's Disc also goes very, very well with Mistress Factory, because Mistress Factory is simply a land when you activate your Neverneral's Disc, and then after activation, you can, um, use your 2-2 uh, assembly workers to start dealing some damage to your opponent. So these these will work together quite well. And then I guess he's also playing with four hypnotic specters because yeah, you know, a hippie is just an amazingly strong creature and an unanswered hippie means a huge problem for the opponent. And I kind of like it in combination with that land destruction strategy because um, you're destroying your opponent's lands so he cannot play out anything. So he probably has a hand full right? That's where Hypnotic Spectre comes in. Then you can destroy his hand as well. So you're attacking him on different levels with this deck. I'm not surprised to see this in the finals. It is looking super, super strong. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, the Green Bees or Green Killers. Yeah, Green Killers. That's it. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck Green Killers by James. And um, I love this deck, man. I'm always a fan of, uh, of Mono Green. 
I played it myself not too long ago and I just love to see all the variations because it's all kind of green aggro, right? But again, we see different choices being made here with different results. I guess in this case, James, the, the right kind of results because you've made it all the way to the finals and you're playing with four killer bees. That's the first thing that really draws in uh, my attention when I saw your deck photo. Killer bees, two green and one to cast for an 0-1 flyer and you can pump it plus one plus one for each green that you spend on it. And that should work really, really well in this strategy because you've got a lot of one drops, two drops, cheap spells to cast. So that means that later on in the game, you will have a lot of green mana left and then you can pump that into your killer bees, making them huge, dealing more damage. So in theory, it should work really well. And I'm saying in theory, because I've tried killer bees myself as well. And for me, they didn't work very well because for some reason, I always had enough to do with my mana, maybe make an assembly worker, uh, you know, play out a berserk or a grove. I always wanted to keep green mana open and I ended up not using so much mana for my killer bees. So I took them out again, but I mean, maybe I should reconsider because James, you've made it to the final and I'm super curious to see how your, your killer bees will hold up. There are a few things uh, besides the bees that I'd like to discuss in this deck and that's the choice to add juggernauts in here as well. I think that's super cool juggernaut. I remember back in the day when I was a little Timmy, I used to love playing with my juggernauts because it's five power for four mana. You can put them in any deck. And, and as I evolved as a player, I started to see the pros and cons of the card and I start to realize that Juggernaut also has a few cons and that is that it's, it's of course an artifact and a creature so it's quite easy to get rid of. It's got three toughness and it has to attack every single turn but still it is a super good card especially combining it with Berserk and in this strategy it's super good. I also love the fact that James has chosen to go for Mazes of Ith here because um, offensively the Maze of Ith or maybe even better than defensively because what you can do is you attack with your whole um, with your whole team and your opponent probably only has one or two blockers. Whatever block he makes, makes if the block is not good for you, you simply use your Maze of Ith, take your creature out of combat, for example, your Juggernaut, you know, and then you can use it again the next turn, the next turn. And it means that your opponent doesn't really get to kill any of your creatures and you can keep putting pressure on your opponent. So I think that's super cool. Another interesting thing here when we're looking at the at the points is that James has made a similar decision to Felix and that is to spend his points on mana, right? We see two points on Mox Emerald, two points on Soul Ring. So these cards are super strong, right? If you're willing to spend so many points on these mana rocks. And I think it's really good against, of course, the Ponza strategy that he is facing. So I'm curious to see how this is going to work out. I think the Nevenerals disc is going to be risky here for James, but I think the land destruction should not bother James too much because a lot of cards he wants to cast are kind of cheap. On the other hand, if you have no lands at all, then it's going to be tough for, you know, whatever player you are. And the Ponza player, of course, can use um, his land destruction and can target it on specific key lands, like, for example, the Assembly Workers, the Pendle Havens, and the Mazes of If. So I still think that the land destruction package is going to be very useful for Felix. But yeah, this is going to be an interesting finals. I'm loving to see both decks and no color blue in the final. So that's kind of interesting as well. Anyway, these are the two decks, Felix versus James. Let's go to the games. Game number one of the X Points Finals 15. So we've got James on the right with his green killers mono green deck. And on the left, we've got Felix, who's playing his Disco Ponza deck. And starting with the Bayou. So both players having some ramp here. Bayou into uh, Birds of Paradise. And with uh, James, we're seeing a lot of else turn one. Let's see what he can do turn two. I'm expecting him to simply drop some more creatures here. There is a lot of elves. Tapping two. Are we going to see... Ooh... We're going to see a Chaos Orb. For a moment there, I thought we were going to see uh, some Argovian Pixies, but a Chaos Orb instead. That's quite interesting. I wonder how he's going to use it, if he's going to use it aggressively or if he's going to use it later in the game. Remember that Lanover Elves does have Summoning Sickness. So if Felix has some uh, Artifact Destruction, he can use that right now and James cannot respond with an activation. There we see a Mistress Factory tapping it maybe into a Soul Ring. That is pretty good. Dropping a Sextral. I was actually expecting him to maybe play some land removal, but a Sextral instead. And the Sextral is now a 3-3 because of that Bayou. That's quite annoying for uh, for James. He could consider flipping on the Bayou, making it back into a 2-2. Wouldn't be the greatest play. 
Okay, he's tapping two green. Is he going to tap? Tapping a third green. A fourth one. Are we going to see an Urnum? Oh, a Juggernaut instead. But the Juggernaut is not great against the Setch Troll. Remember, Setch Troll is a 3-3 with regeneration. So I wonder if James has a plan for that Setch Troll. There we see a Scrubland, I believe. Or is it a Savannah? No, it's a Savannah on the side of Felix. He's a little bit in the tank, looking at his options. I wonder if we're going to see Hypnotic Spectre or just some land removal. There's a Disenchant on the Chaos Orb. That is brilliant. Really good for Felix. It's looking great for him thus far. Remember, if you're green, you want to win the game quickly. And uh, for the Ponza player, he's got a little bit more time. Tapping the... Birds of Paradise for another Birds of Paradise and passing the turn. So just keeping, of course, that black mana open to regenerate the Sedge, expecting the attack from the Juggernaut. There's another force, so he's going to attack. I wonder if maybe James has a Berserk. So there's the block. He's going to regenerate, tapping a green. Yep, yeah, there's the Berserk. So that means that Felix is still taking seven points of damage. Beautiful black bordered cards, by the way, James. So Berserk doubles the power of the creature and gives it Trample. So that means seven points of damage. This is what you want to do when you're the green player. I think if you're James, a killer beast right now would be perfect. Tapping two. Is he also going to tap the Lanawar Elves here for a potential killer beast? Tapping three. Oh, a killer beast. Yep, of course, they're three mana, not four mana. Excuse me. Pardon my French. Anyway, it's an 0-1 flyer, and he can pump it for one green, give it plus one, plus one. So he could use his open Lanawar to make it a 1-2. Not very relevant at the moment, though. But the great thing about the Killer Bees is that it's flying, so it doesn't have to worry about that pesky Setch Troll. I wonder if Felix uh, already has an answer. I mean, one Lightning Bolt is enough. And I also wonder if he's going to attack here with the Setch Troll. He's got some options. I believe four cards in hand there. Thinking about tapping down the Soul Ring. We're just going to wait. We'll have to wait and see what is he going to do. Tapping for two, it seems. Tapping three colorless. Oh, he's animating and attacking with the Factory Worker and the Satch Troll. So he can deal five points of damage now. Unfortunately, uh, we can't really see the life total here of James, but I think this is the first damage that he's taken, so he's going to go to 15. So we'll try to keep track of that. So he's on 15. And then we see a Hypnotic Spectre. Okay. So now he's going to untap. That Hippie is a little bit of a problem for James here, because if he chooses to attack, that means he, you know, he opens himself up for a Counter-Strike with the Hypnotic Spectre, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to lose any cards. Well, he's attacking anyway with the Killer Beast. So this is going to be interesting. Is, is Felix going to block? He's actually just going to block on the Birds of Paradise, which I understand, you know. I mean, he's got enough mana anyway. He's going to tap two green for an Argovian Pixies. Interesting. So that means that James is probably going to lose that one card in hand. I wonder what it is. Perhaps just to land. And I think that Felix is going to attack again with full force here. With his 3-3 Sedge, his 2-2 Assembly Worker. Although the Assembly Worker can be easily blocked by the Argovian Pixie, so that would be a bad decision. So I think if I'm looking at the board state, I would attack here exactly with these two creatures. Remember, he can still uh, regenerate the Sedge, and Hypnotic Spectre has Flying. So that means five more points of damage. James is on 10 at the moment, has to discard his Juggernaut. So James on 10 and Felix on 13. Let's see what Felix can do here. Second main phase. Maybe he wants to keep enough mana open to also regenerate the Satch and animate the factory worker. And that's why he's a little bit in the tank here. I mean, I wonder if he's going to chum block next turn with the birds on the Killer Bees. He, I mean, he is pretty safe. Okay, he's casting a regrowth, getting back the Birds of Paradise, which is a great blocker. 
And he's playing it out again, but he then does need another green. So he is stepping the bayou, so kind of leaving an opening here, potentially for James to kill the set because he can no longer regenerate it. But I think against mono green, you don't really have to worry too much about that here. There's just a land, which is at least useful for the killer bees. I'm expecting a chump block again. So there's another chump. And that's about it. So there's a pass. So things are looking quite good for Felix here. James is on 10. And I wonder if James is going to block the Setch. I guess he's not going to next turn already. So that means another 5 damage. And he would go down to 5. So he doesn't attack. Let's see if James is going to block. No, he's not. So he's going to drop to 5 life. And he still doesn't have a flyer. No cards in hand. I mean, things are looking very grim here for James. Remember, it is just game 1 though. There we see a recall. Wonder what he's getting back. Maybe another Birds of Paradise to do another chum block. Okay, putting two cards away here. Wow. Getting back a regrowth and a Birds of Paradise. And I think this is a good decision because looking at the board state, mana wise, you don't really have anything to do with your land removal here in this matchup. He's got two Lunara Elves out already. So, I mean, you're just going to chum block the Killer Bees. I think if you're James, you maybe want to keep the Killer Bees at bay right now. There is another Lanawar. So, I mean, if you're James, you can use your Lanawars to chum block, of course. That will buy you some time. So, Felix here drawing for turn. Of course, attacking with the Satch. James on five, so he's going to start chum blocking now. And okay, there we see another Satch troll. That is really good because those Birds of Paradise also generate black mana. So that's another way to regenerate them. So this is bad news for James. He has to get rid. Okay, there's the attack of the Killer Beast. Probably thinking, okay, he's going to chump and that's going to cost him another black source. The problem, of course, for James here is that he's now going to take damage. Okay, there's a Script Sprite. I want to say he's now going to take some damage from the Hippie. Maybe he still does. I mean, he's on five. Then again, you don't want to go to three against the deck that plays red because you know that they probably have lightning bolts in their deck. So it is a risk you're taking going to three. On the other hand, Felix or James is, is, is so in the corner of this matchup. Maybe he has to play towards his out and take the risk of taking some damage from the hippie. But we'll just have to see what he's going to do. I'm expecting Felix to attack here, at least with both of the set trolls. I think I would attack with the Hippie as well, to be honest. Just putting full pressure on, forcing James to make tough decisions. He's on five. Another option would be to keep one set troll at bay. Green decks can, of course, be quite explosive. They can find a Giant Grove and a Berserk. But, you know, James has no cards in hand, I believe. So it's kind of safe. Exactly. Attacking here, I would do the same, I think. Two set trolls and a Hippie for eight damage. James is on five. He has to block here. I mean, you can chump block, but how long can you actually keep that up? Tough decisions to be made here for James. Looks like he's thrown both of his Lanara Elves in front of the bus here. And does that mean he takes... Yeah, he takes two points of damage from the Hippie. I believe he's now on three life. And he's got nothing to discard. So this kind of makes sense from James's perspective, but the problem for James is still there. Felix now thinking about his next move in the second main phase, I guess. Okay, let's see what he's gonna do. We're getting, getting some action. Okay, there's an ice storm on one of the lands. Only one card left in hand. It seems at least. I think it's just one card. Is it two cards actually? No, I think it's just the one. Anyway, James drawing for turn. He needs uh, he needs a bit of a miracle. Those set trolls are a huge pain for him here. You can see the, the true strength of regeneration in this uh, matchup. There's at least an extra blocker. But it's not an answer to his problems. Felix taking on his turn, drawing a card for turn. And I guess he wants to attack first. 
Maybe he's got some land removal and he wants to destroy the Mishra's factory first. That could be an option as well. Interesting, tapping the mana birds. Destroying the factory, but it does mean he doesn't have one black open to regenerate. The Sedge. He's gonna attack with the full army. So now James could, if he wants to, kill the hippie, but he also has to block both of the trolls because of his life, because he's on three at the moment. So he's gonna pump, he's gonna kill the Hypnotic Spectre, and he's gonna chum block the two set, just taking no damage, he's still on three. There's another forest. Nope, that's it. I mean, there's just been so much pressure. And here you could really see the strength of a Sedge Troll. If you don't have an answer for the Sedge, it is tough. Because he can just keep attacking, especially in this matchup. If, you know, if James would have just found, for example, an Urnum, it would have been so much easier for him. Although with Urnum, he would have given Forest Walk to one of his creatures. Ah, I don't know. Ah, it was just tough. Anyway, first game is, uh, is done. Both players are going to dive into the sideboards. And we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Felix versus James, the finals of the X points. James on the play here after losing that first game. That's a pretty good opening here. Mishra's Factory and a Mox Emerald. And are we going to see, yep, a Birds of Paradise by Felix here on turn one, the same as that he did on game number one. He had the same opening. So James can um, get some uh, damage in if he wants, or maybe he's got a better option. Looks like he's going to animate going for two here. So two damage for Felix, dropping to 18. Does he also have a Lanerer or no, a Scavenger Folk or Sprites? Nothing, just a pass. And are we now going to see some land destruction by Felix, potentially on the Mistress Factory, I guess? Yeah, taking care of the factory does mean he takes a point from his own City of Brass, dropping to 17 here. And James going to take his turn number two. Tapping the green. Okay, there's the Scavenger Folk. Are we going to see an Argovian Pixies? No, so James is kind of light. On creatures here with his list you would expect him to have a turn one play and a turn two play there is oh here we see the land destruction strip mine and a sinkhole taking care of the mana base of James James attacking here for one putting Felix on 16 does he have a land drop at least I hope so okay well it's a maze though it's not ideal what he could have done, by the way, is uh, play a maze first, get Scavenger back from attack after damage, and then he could have used the Scavenger in case that Felix might cast a useful artifact. There's a regrowth. Is he going to get back some land destruction here? And he is getting back, of course, to strip mine, stripping the maze. That's actually what's happening here, but both players probably uh, explained it verbally. And uh, there's some more damage for Felix, dropping to 15. And I believe that James is still on 20. There is that Sedge Troll again. And we saw the power of Sedge Troll in game number one. This is really a nightmare creature for James in this matchup. Sedge Troll is just so good. There we see another Scavenger Folk. Scavenger Folk can be great, but not right now. He needs something else. For example, an Urnum would be great. He could block the Sedge and he could simply give Forest Walk to the Birds of Paradise. He doesn't have enough mana, of course, to cast the Urnum, mean, even if he has one. And there we could see the power of that land destruction by Felix. Felix here attacking with a 3-3. Is James just going to take the damage here? I think he is. He's going to drop to 17. And, oh, there's an earthquake for one. So he's going to drop to 16, lose all his creatures. We could be in for a very short game because it's looking super bad for James here. So he's on 16 at the moment. Which is not the problem. The problem here, yeah, is, is he going to attack for two? Look at that. Felix taking a damage. He's going to disenchant. Oh, I think, call me crazy, I would probably have disenchanted the Mox here. Because then he cannot do anything. He needs his green mana to cast like Lana or Elves and stuff. I would have probably just taken the two, destroyed the Mox. Anyway, another attack for three. So he's going to drop to 13. There we see a Neveneral's Disc. Wow, this is so bad for James. James just having the Mox Emerald. Okay, at least having a Crumble. Taking care of the disc to kind of save his Mox Emerald, giving four life back to Felix. Another attack here. 
So he's going to drop to 10, I believe. Trying to keep track of the score for you guys. So he's on 10. There's another Satch Troll. Oh, man. So that means he's going to drop to 4 if he doesn't find anything. And no, that's it, actually. James is saying, you know what? You've got this one. There's nothing I can do with my one little Mox Emerald. Maybe he was already lower than I thought he was. Anyway... James, it, it was just not meant to be. Sometimes you have these finals. Um, it is what it is. And of course, a congratulations here to Felix. Here we see both of the players. Thank you for being on Timmy Talks, by the way. I think this was the first time that we saw both of you here. So uh, yeah, thank you for sharing your match with all of us. And uh, to James, hopefully when you get into another final, you'll have more luck. I think we didn't see your deck the way it's supposed to work. You made it all the way to the finals. So we know that it works. And it's just great to see Killer Beast making it this far this is just from a personal note because i'm a big fan of the creature but of course a big congratulations to felix for combining two really good decks together with um disco troll and ponza making it into one deck disco ponza or ponza disco whatever you name it man because you came with this deck to this tournament also a big thank you to Luki for sharing once again uh one of his finals of his x points series thank you very much for that and that was the episode for today. Yes, yeah, sometimes finals just go this way. It is what it is, people. If you want to see more X-Points, by the way, there's a card popping up right now that will take you straight to the X-Points playlist with many more matches and a lot of exciting finals, actually. Um, what else is there? Oh, yeah, before you go, please take a moment to like, share, comment do all that stuff it's completely free and it really helps the channel move forward and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing and ring that bell okay and then there's one last thing that you can do and you can already see there on your screen the timmy talks patreon page you can give a visit to that page and consider becoming a timmy talks patron and with your patronage i can help keeping timmy afloat well i should say timmy i mean of course timmy talks the channel that was kind of a a weird sentence anyway my point is you can become a sponsor the cool thing is if you become a sponsor of the show you have access to the timmy talks discord and you have access to all the timmy talks online tournaments and events that i organize and oh yeah there's so much when you become a patron and your name will be listed in the end scroll what end scroll this end scroll what shall we do with the Somebody can see.